Greetings, Carfanags. By popular demand, I'm going to be doing a review of my ownership experience of my 2008 Porsche Cayenne Turbo with just over 116,000 miles. I'm going to first cover all the issues I've had with this car and stay tuned because there is definitely a lot of issues this car has had. I'll also talk about some mods I've done to personalize this car. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the very first issue we had with this car occurred at 19,000 miles, and that was with the parking brake. There was a parking brake dampener that was bad and that was replaced under warranty. Now, the next issue occurred at 26,000 miles, and that had to do with a coolant leak and a thermostat. So just behind this area, you have the water pump, the thermostat, and all of that that keeps the engine cool. That had a leak and it had to be replaced and that was also done under warranty. Now at 32,000 miles the original owner was experiencing condensation in the driver's side daytime running light. That was replaced also under warranty. Then at 40,000 miles we had an issue with the high pressure fuel pump which is somewhere in that area but essentially the car wasn't starting consistently and that was also replaced under warranty. Then just 1,000 miles later, at 41,000 miles, the owner had an issue with the door cable. He wasn't able to open it. It basically was the door cable that went out and that was also replaced under warranty. Then from there, the car really didn't have too many issues for another 16,000 miles, but at 57,000 miles, the car had the infamous issue with the drive shaft support bearing. And unfortunately, because they didn't catch the issue quick enough, this drive shaft was also damaged and it had to be replaced. Then just 2,000 miles later, the front horn went out and that had to be replaced. And while we're here, I'll show you the next issue. Well, guess what? At 65,000 miles, we had yet again another coolant leak that had to do with the thermostat and the water pump. The thermostat had to be replaced along with the gasket and unfortunately that wasn't under warranty. And then just 5,000 miles later at a little over 70,000 miles when I took ownership of the car, I was driving on the highway and guess what? One of these ignition coils located below this cover over here went out and basically I had the check engine light flashing the engine was sputtering and wasn't really making good power and I had to pull over and get the car towed but that cost me a good $621 doing it myself. Then for the next 10,000 miles my ownership experience was pretty good but at 80,000 miles I actually had an issue with a vacuum pump over here. It's all the way back there but that had to be replaced. I did at the time have an aftermarket warranty but without it this would have been a pretty expensive job. And then guess what? At 83,000 miles, just a few thousand miles later, we had another issue with the engine. And what do you guess it was? Another coolant leak. This time, the thermostat housing, the thermostat, the coolant reservoir, all of that had to be replaced because it was leaking coolant all over the floor. Um, so that was the third time this car has had an issue with that. And then we're going to make our way over to the driver's side mirror over here. At around 85,000 miles, the side mirror was malfunctioning. So when you put the car in reverse, the mirror tilts. And then when you put it back into forward, it goes back to its original position, or that's at least what it's supposed to do. Unfortunately, with mine, the mirror was not returning back to the correct position. I actually didn't spend any money to fix it because what I did was I took the motor from the other side of the car and I just swapped it here and guess what that fixed the issue and I have the bad motor on the other side but the other side doesn't tilt like this so I never really run into the issue anymore. And then the next thing I had go wrong with the car was at 90,000 miles and you know what it was? The drive shaft support bearing again but that's because the first time it was replaced it was replaced with the OEM one which is prone to wearing out. So my mechanic actually caught it just in time and was able to replace just the bearing itself and not the entire drive shaft. And while the mechanic replaced the drive shaft support bearing, we also noticed that the control arms in the front had play in them. So then he replaced the control arms in the front, the strut mount over there, and then the various bushings underneath. And that came out to a whopping nearly $2,200.
And then after that, I was able to get about 15,000 miles without any issues whatsoever with the car. But then I started to notice a little bit of vibration when I was driving and when I would be stopped. And after doing some diagnosis, the mechanic realized that it was the engine mounts and the transmission mount that were going bad. So because I had the aftermarket warranty, he was able to get that covered. Without that, I would have had a whopping $3,300 bill to replace the engine and the transmission mounts. And that's because this whole engine has to be dropped. And then as we make our way to the back at 109,000 miles, I went on a road trip from Phoenix to Dallas. And when I got there, the back wheels were making some noise. Well, guess what it was? The right rear wheel bearing over here. So that was replaced and out of precaution, we did the other side and that came out to a good $2,000. And then shortly after I replaced the wheel bearings, guess what I had happen? I actually had water intrusion into the cabin. So these different drain ports all over the car, they get plugged up and then when water comes, it can't flow how it normally would. It builds up, it accumulates up in the sunroof and it drains into the car. And then my carpet over here, it was all wet. I had to dry it out. And then you can see I got a little bit of water damage on the leather from the water kind of dripping through. But that was an annoying issue. It should be addressed during routine maintenance. Um, but in my case, I caught it after the fact. But gratefully for all you guys, you guys have a really good DIY video so you can clear these drain ports and keep water out of your cabin. And the most recent issue I had with the car was that it would turn off randomly when idling. And it turns out it was a bad crankshaft positioning sensor. It's all the way like on the back side of the motor near the transmission. And this was something I researched. I found that that was the issue, but I bought the sensor for about 50 bucks. I was able to do all the work from up here and then below the car and replace that. But now the engine works well. Now let's talk about some other issues that are pretty common and ones that I've experienced. So when we move to the back seat, we have these seat back covers on the seats and these are prone to coming off. So with the heat and over time, the glue breaks down and then this thing just falls back. And if you don't catch it soon enough, it'll break these clips down there and then you have a whole mess trying to put it back. If you do catch it early, you can't just put some super glue, put it back and it'll be nice and good. And then when we go back here, we have an issue with the cup holder. So you push it and it doesn't come out, but you have to pull it and then it comes out. So that's kind of a annoying issue, but it still works. In addition, there's a cover down here and that completely broke off, but that's a pretty common issue that happens based on how this is designed over there. And moving to the front of the car, let me show you what's going on over here. So over here, we have the issue with the uh, sunglass visor. You have this little clip in here that kind of keeps it in. And then over time, this clip breaks off like we have here, but that's a quick fix. I actually bought the part and I'm gonna fix it, but that stops this from staying upright. And then the final issue I wanna mention is with the PCM system. So sometimes when you turn on the car, um, this doesn't happen that often, but it will say, um, you know, PCM uh, system unavailable. And basically you can't get any music or anything like that, but then I shut off the car and I turn it back on and it works. So that's a very minor issue. Um, you know, some people have had their PCM units go out, but fortunately mine is still functioning. All right, so as you can see, the Porsche Cayenne has definitely had a lot of issues. Every few thousand miles, something was going wrong and sure nothing was catastrophic, but all these bills added up. If you look at all the maintenance repairs that this vehicle has had over its 15 year life, it totals $14,833. And that's a little bit cheaper because I did some of the work myself. Now, factoring in maintenance, that is an additional 8,200 for things like tires, brakes, oil changes, and also factor in that I did some of that work myself, so it's a little bit cheaper. So at least for this Cayenne, the total cost for maintenance and repairs adds up to $23,033. So if we look at the 15 year life, this averages to a little over $1,535 per year. 
But if we just look at how much I spent on maintenance and repairs during my six year ownership, it actually comes out to $2,791 per year. So don't get me wrong, this car is by no means trouble free, but you know, the issues, it kind of comes with the territory of having all of the capability that this car offers. There is a lot I do like. I really love the driving experience. Let me actually show you some of the mods I've done to this car. So the first modification I wanna highlight are these beautiful sport seats. It has a nice Alcantara insert, these much larger bolsters that keep you in place. But I actually purchased these on eBay from a junkyard and these seats came out of a GTS. And you know, they just bolt right on in and they're way grippier than the original seats on the car. So that's a really good mod, my favorite by far because it really keeps you planted. And then in addition, to match the seats, I got the Alcantara cover for the steering wheel. The steering wheel is pretty thin to start, but when you put the Alcantara cover on, it gives you that added thickness and makes the steering wheel feel really nice. And I just really love the feel of Alcantara on your hands. This steering wheel cover was probably around 60 bucks and didn't take too long to install. The other modification I have on the car is this race chip pedal tuner. So the factory pedal, is just really lazy in the standard mode so you end up having to put the car into sport mode to get better throttle response but that messes up your mpg this actually gives you a bunch of settings that you can put so it goes all the way from race plus to race to sport plus to sport to normal and then you could even use like an eco mode but this allows you to tune the throttle response um, on the car so that's been a pretty good mod and then the final modification I've done to the car is actually when it comes to the exhaust system. I've actually done a gundo hack, so let me just go over here and show you how that works. So you can see I have this extra pipe that runs from the muffler and goes directly to the exhaust tips. This gives you a partial bypass effect and it gives you a much throatier exhaust tone than you would normally have without this. Right, car fanatics well there you have it this is my 2008 porsche cayenne turbo with 116,000 miles it is 15 years old and overall it's had its fair share of issues it was one thing after another after another but now the car after i've replaced so many things i finally hope that everything has been sorted out and i'll be able to enjoy it for another 10 years or so you know, for me, this is really a keeper. I love all the capabilities. I've modified it to my personal taste, and I think the car still looks beautiful. If you're thinking about purchasing an old Porsche Cayenne Turbo, these are some issues you should be aware of. In general, the 957s from 2008 to 2010 were more reliable than the 2002 to 2006 Porsche Cayennes, so something to consider. Well, thanks for watching, Car Fanatics. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Leave me comments or questions below and be sure to hit that bell notification icon so you're notified each time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching.